Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, if you haven't tuned into previous lessons, I suggest that you go back and do so. If this is your first time here, my name is Lauren. I work for a group called Compass Mark in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We provide a program called Leaders of Future Generations to a couple of schools in our area, which is where some of these lessons are derived from. Okay, let's get started. Today's lesson is on respect and empathy. But first we're gonna start with a quote by a famous novelist named Mohsin Hamid. And Mohsin said, empathy is about finding echoes of another person in yourself. Cool, we'll talk about that later. So what is respect? We've spoken about respect when we discussed um, having your own self-respect, but what does it mean to show other people respect? We tend to hear the word a lot. We hear respect, you know, older people, respect yourselves, respect your friends, respect uh, your teachers. We hear about respect all the time, but what does it actually mean? So respect refers to treating others the way that you want to be treated or having value or showing regard for something or someone. So respect could be an attitude or it could be an action or it could be both. You can even have respect for someone that you'll never meet like an athlete or a scientist or a politician, someone that you look up to and you respect them, even though you'll never meet them. Okay, or maybe you will. Uh, having respect for others is a very important part of getting along and making this world a more peaceful place. We are going to come into contact with people who are not like us. And that's actually a really good thing, um, but sometimes we might not always see it as a good thing at first. In fact, most people are not exactly like anybody else. I mean, I could not name for you someone who's exactly like me, and I doubt that you could either. Even my closest friends have a lot of differences from me, and that's cool, that's a good thing, okay? When we are diverse, it helps us learn and it helps us grow. It helps us see things from a different perspective and even expand our thinking. And sometimes we might try things that we never would have tried if we hadn't had that friend who really likes sushi or octopus or whatever it might be, their diverse interests gave us something new to think about and a new way to do something. You may come into a situation where you and someone else can't agree or can't get along on something, but learning how to agree to disagree with that person while still showing them respect is something really important. And we will talk on that more when we talk about conflict itself. But, um, but even in situations where it's just because someone is different, um, being able to remain different and celebrate that instead of trying to get that person to be more like you or you be more like them, but being able to still be different and, and be respectful is really important. So it's not always easy, though, to show other people respect, especially when they're disrespectful to us. Um, when we're disrespected by others be, for being who we are, it creates a conflict. And it makes us feel inferior sometimes, and sometimes maybe even a little defensive, which can lead to more conflicts. Sometimes we're faced with disrespect, but even in those times, we should still try to show respect back to that person. And that's because sometimes it might take someone showing other people the right way to be to change everything. Uh, when I talk about this with kids in school, I usually ask how many of them have siblings and if their siblings always show them respect. Just because having siblings is a, it's a pretty common experience to uh, tease each other or um, maybe not always use the best choices or the most respect with each other. And sometimes when we might feel disrespected by a sibling, does that mean that we should show them disrespect back? Because if that's the logic, then that means that's how we want to be treated, right? If we're treating them with disrespect, then that's what we want? No, we want respect. So even when it's hard, even when it's challenging, you should still try to show respect to other people. And you'd be surprised how often you actually get respected back. So um, we're gonna move into something called, uh, our second topic today called empathy. Empathy is a word that we hear sometimes, but we might not all understand what it means. Empathy is our ability to feel for someone else or to put ourselves in someone else's shoes, as some people might say. When you hear about someone's situation or a stressor they might be dealing with, we can, we can sympathize with them because we have empathy. And even though sympathy and empathy sound similar, they're actually not the same. So it's important to understand the distinction. When we feel sympathy for someone, we feel badly for them. Okay, we might pity them or um, we, we, we like want to comfort them and we want to cheer them up. That's great. Sympathy is definitely a good thing. But empathy takes it a little step further. It makes it a little more active. 
So when we have empathy for someone, it involves us feeling for them, understanding how they feel on a deeper level because we can relate to the feelings. Empathy helps us show respect for other people. It also helps us show that we care about their well-being. So learning how to express empathy to others is a skill that, um, that would help our world be such a peaceful place, right? If we could all just be empathetic towards each other and you know understand how they feel from their perspective. Unfortunately, some people don't understand empathy or at least don't understand how to show it to others. But really, it's super simple. Showing empathy to others is as simple as being there for them. You don't have to solve everyone's problems, okay? When someone comes to you and they're upset about something, you don't have to give them the solution. They just want to be heard. And so sometimes just helping them understand that you relate or that you understand how they feel um, can go a really long way. So let's talk through a couple examples. Let's say it's Friday at lunch and you're sitting with all of your friends in the cafeteria, laughing, talking about some TV show you watched last night or whatever it might be, when suddenly you hear a crash and a bunch of laughter. You see that one of the kids in your school tripped and spilled their lunch all over themselves. Oh. You start to laugh too because you thought that it was funny and it was this crazy thing that just happened. You laugh also because you're happy that it's not you. But wait, then you remember that last year you tripped in the cafeteria and you spilled your pudding all over yourself. You remember how horrible that felt, how embarrassed you were to be laughed at like that. So suddenly you stop laughing. Now you feel for the kid and you understand how they feel. Okay, here's another example. There's a new girl at school and she doesn't seem to be able to make any friends. She dresses differently than other kids. She likes different music and likes to do different activities. You notice this girl on her first day because you remember what it was like when you were the new kid last year. You felt confused and nervous and very alone. Now you feel for her and you understand how she feels. So in both of these situations, we went from maybe having a little sympathy for this person to actually feeling empathy for them because now we could identify with how they felt. We understood it and, uh, and we were able to put ourselves in their shoes. So now what do we do? Is that it? Is that like enough? No. Now with empathy, we can take this practice a step further. So how can we put our empathy into action for these kids? So for the kid in the cafeteria, you understood that he felt sad and embarrassed, maybe even angry. Okay, all these kids are laughing at him. I mean, that would just feel awful. To show him empathy, you could maybe go over and help him clean up. Maybe you could get him a new lunch because it sounds like he lost his. You could even encourage the kids in the cafeteria to stop laughing. You can see past this temporary joke or temporary situation that you find funny to see the person in need and actually find a way to help them. That would be showing empathy, actually putting it into action. For the new girl in your school, maybe you could give her a tour of the school. You could ask her if she needs any help with anything. You could try to get to know her, ask some questions about herself. You could invite her to hang out with your friends or if maybe it's not really a good fit with your friends for some reason, maybe you, when you get to know her, you find out that she loves soccer. So you introduce her to the soccer team or something. You could do something to help aid her way through figuring this out. Maybe even telling her stories about what it was like when you were new. Showing that connection between her can, um, can help embrace the empathy and put your empathy into action. Which brings me to my next point that empathy, it helps us feel more connected to those around us. Understanding that beyond all the things that make us different, we all understand what feelings are. We understand what emotions are and we can relate to what those emotions feel like. So maybe you didn't trip in the cafeteria before, or maybe you were never the new kid at your school and you've gone there your whole life. Does that mean that you can't feel empathy for these people? No, of course not. Because I'm sure we've all had similar experiences when we've been embarrassed before, or tripped over our shoes, or uh, got called out for forgetting something in class, or something that made us feel embarrassed. So understanding that feeling is enough to help us be able to understand what to do next and how to show them empathy and, um, and be able to care for them. Or, you know, maybe you were never the new kid, but maybe you've been left out of a group before, or you were picked last in gym class, or your friends didn't invite you to something at one point, and you can relate to what it felt like to be alone, or to be rejected, or to feel like you didn't have any friends. Okay, so being able to take that feeling and understand how they feel and put your empathy into action. It helps connect us to, the, to those around us, and it helps us actually be a better friend and a better person. 
And as a leader, having empathy of others helps you think not just of yourself, but of everyone. It helps you understand other people and make decisions that would benefit each of them as well. You may come across a situation with others that you've never experienced before. Learning to feel for them and be empathetic can help you better connect with them. The last thing we're going to talk about is self-respect, which like I said, we talked a little bit when we talked about self-confidence, but self-respect is a little bit different. Self-respect means that you have value in yourself, not just believing in yourself and having confidence, but actually loving and embracing who you are for everything about you, for your strengths, your weaknesses, the things that you, um, you like to do, the things that you don't like to do, everything that makes you, you. Because as I've said twice now, you're the only version of you in this entire world. And that's really, really amazing. So um, we have to embrace it, okay? Not just believing in yourself, but actually embracing yourself. It's tempting at times to put ourselves down when we struggle to reach our goals or when we face obstacles, making friends or having to deal with difficult situations. But if we surrender our identity to fit in, if we surrender who we are and things that we like just to fit in with the crowd, it can be a really lonely situation and you're actually disrespecting yourself. You're disrespecting who you are and what makes you, you. So we deserve respect from others. Even if we look different, sound different, have different values and opinions, and we deserve to respect ourselves too. So here's a couple examples of self-respect. Jonathan has wanted to join the band for as long as he can remember. Finally, when it came his turn to try out for the band, it turned out that he did not get a spot. The, uh, not coach, the uh, band instructor told him that, uh, that he had a great audition, but his spot was actually already filled by someone older than him, so he's going to have to wait till next year. Jonathan feels very defeated. He feels like his dreams are a waste of time. He tells himself that his goals are worthless and he shouldn't try to do, he shouldn't try to reach for anything anymore. Is Jonathan showing himself self-respect? No, definitely not. He is putting himself down for something that's actually even out of his control. And even if he had not made the team or the band because he wasn't good enough yet, that's also a possibility, but that doesn't mean that he should stop either. He could continue to practice and keep working if it's something that he really wants to do, which it sounds like it is. He could understand that sometimes we don't get what we want right away, but that doesn't mean that we should stop trying. Another example is a girl named Candace. Candace saw a really cool radical hairstyle in a magazine that is like not how anyone else looks at school and she wanted to try it. She knew that some people would not approve and that she might get some weird looks and she might even get made fun of a little for her new hairstyle, but she did it anyway. Was Candace showing her self-respect? Yes. She was true to herself no matter what other people might think or what the consequences might be. So showing yourself respect as a leader helps you inspire respect from others as well. When we change ourselves to fit in, sometimes we actually lose the respect of other people because we weren't confident enough to be our true selves. If you don't believe in who you are and embrace who you are, then why should other people, a group of people, follow you as a leader? As a leader, you show yourself respect. It'll actually help inspire them to respect themselves as well. Like I said, respect the way that you want to be treated. It's kind of like a ripple effect. If you respect others, they should give you respect back. But if you respond to people with disrespect, you're going to find disrespect as a reaction more often than not. So let's go back to our quote from earlier. Empathy is about finding echoes of another person in yourself. So I really like this quote. I think it's uh, really beautiful. Um, and I think, uh, I think what he's trying to tell us is that when we find empathy for someone else, it's, uh, it's connecting on a deeper level. It's being able to dig down deeper to those echoes inside yourself of a situation you might have had a very long time ago, but even so you can still relate to them because it's within you. So you still have this relation, this connection to this feeling within you somewhere um, to be able to relate to other people. So a couple of discussion questions for you today. Number one, I want you to think about the people in your life that you respect. Maybe people you know, such as family members, friends, or teachers, or maybe people that you don't know, like a famous person. What is it about them that you respect? Number two, how do you show yourself respect? And number three, 
Describe a time when you showed someone empathy. So not just felt it for them, but how did you show it to them? So for today's at-home activity, I want you to choose a character from a book, TV show, or movie and write a short journal entry for that character. I want you to think about what this character goes through and how they feel because of what they go through. Explain to the reader what happened to them, how that made them feel, and how it had an impact on their life. I want you to really dig deep and try to identify with how this person feels. And try to also identify what clues within the story, TV show or movie, um, told you that. Okay, and I would really love it if you would uh, if you would share that with me, either the whole journal entry or just the character that you chose and what they go through. Uh, I think that would be really interesting. So if you want to, please uh, comment below with that information and I will read it and respond back to you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on respect and empathy and that you look forward to future uh, lessons in the future. Um, be well, be safe, and I will see you soon.